Welcome again everyone. My lesson for discussion now is about transient tachypnea of the newborn. Transient tachypnea of the newborn is a clinical syndrome of self-limited tachypnea associated with delayed clearance of fetal lung fluid. And its incidence is estimated at 3 to 6 per 1000 term infants at birth and making TTN the most common etiology of tachypnea in the newborn. The common associated risk factors for having a TTN is a twin pregnancy and the delivery, maternal asthma, late prematurity, precipitous delivery, gestational diabetes, and a caesarean delivery without labor. Normally, clearance of fetal lung fluid occurs through increased expression of epithelial sodium channels and sodium potassium ATPs that drive active sodium and thereby fluid reabsorption. Normally, fetal lung fluid is absorbed during labor, delivery, and after delivery by crying and the different mechanisms. One third of it is absorbed prenatally during labor, one third during vaginal delivery, and one third after delivery. TTN is believed to result from ineffective expression or activity of epithelial sodium channels and sodium potassium adenosine triphosphate activity, which slows absorption of fetal lung fluid and the results in decreased pulmonary compliance and also impeded gas exchange. So this causes transient tachypnea of the newborn. Transient means short-lived. Tachypnea means fast breathing more than 60 breaths per minute and newborn is a disease of a baby that is born right now. When we see the clinical manifestation of TTN, TTN is a respiratory disorder usually seen shortly after birth in babies who are born near or at term. And TTN is characterized by early onset of tachypnea, sometimes with retraction or expiratory granting and occasionally with cyanosis that is relieved by minimal oxygen supplementation. And the chest generally sound is clear on auscultation without crackles or wheezes. The chest radiograph shows prominent perihilar pulmonary vascular markings, fluid in the interlobal fissures and a redly small pleural effusion. Distinguishing TTN from respiratory distress syndrome, which is a disease of prematurity and other respiratory disorders such as pneumonia might be difficult, that is why TTN is frequently a diagnosis of exclusion. The distinctive features of TTN are rapid recovery of the infant and the absence of radiographic findings for RDS such as low lung volume, diffuse reticrogranular pattern and air bronchogram, and also TTN is a disease of late preterm and the term baby. Uh, while RDS is a disease of prematurity and uh, we can differentiate by those mechanisms uh, TTN from other problems. Regarding treatment of TTN, treatment for TTN is supportive and the majority of them resolve spontaneously like by giving intranasal oxygen and if the patient is in severe distress by continuous positive airway pressure, any to feeding or IV maintenance fluid till the condition resolves and inhaled beta agonists such as albuterol increases expression and activity of epithelial sodium channel and the sodium potassium ATPs and the facilitate fluid clearance. So recent studies show that albuterol might improve oxygenation, shorter the duration of supplemental oxygen therapy and the faster recovery. And usually this condition recovers within the first 72 hours. And if the problem persists more than 3-4 days, we are missing something and we should have to search for other causes because it is not TTN. This is all about a short summary of TTN. Thank you for watching.